Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. That's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Appreciate you hitting the button. Welcome to the How to Hustle podcast with Hype. This is episode 114. You follow me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Hype. It's H Y M P E. It's Hype. It's not Hype. I'm not geeked up. Special guest in the building, West Coast. What's happening? And reintroduce yourself to the audience. You want John Watson, Sports for You podcast at J Watson's M I N A 4 on Twitter and IG. He give out what's, what's up? What's up? This Mark, uh, Sports for You podcast. Uh, hi, I'm Mark and hi, I'm Mark One on Twitter. You know what I'm talking about? This your boy Nick Freeze. You know what I'm saying? Sports for you podcast. Follow me on um social media at 99 Gorilla with extreme caution. Copy that. Now uh let them know where y'all coming in from. International hype, not just a hashtag. It is a way of life. Representing the West Coast, LA. Copy that. Time for the rundown. E Block Radio Network every Monday, two o'clock on the E Block Radio Network. Tuesday, GFT Radio Network, two o'clock. Wednesday, two one six to blend, twelve midnight, eight AM eight PM. Thursday, wide open. West Coast, what's happening? I say podcast radio network Fridays at 10 a.m. And then we go Saturday, THC Media, every Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday's wide open. West Coast, what's happening? Dallas, I need both of them situations back on the situation so we can get situated. Now, we go Custom Hustle World for the Instagram, Custom Hustle Co. for Twitter. That is my clothing line. We do jerseys, custom jerseys, custom jackets, custom T-shirts. We got the shorts. The hat should be in by the time that this episode drops. Uh, we have the sneaks. We have the ones and the twos. You want the CH ones or the CH twos? They're available in any color that you can put together. Uh, the threes will be coming soon, actually, too. And um, yeah, the hats. Like I said, the hats should be landing soon too. And we got more product that we're working on. Also, the barber capes. The barber capes with the How to Hustle Enterprise are all over them. So if you cut hair, or do hair in or out of the city, however you need to make these situations happen, we will make it happen. H2H Cleaning on Instagram only. That is my cleaning company. We do roof and plumbing, HVAC, cleanups, clean outs, flooring, carpeting, and remodeling. So if you need us to come out to the West Coast and get your situation all together, we'll make it worth my while and we will slide. Now, episode 113, Sports for You back in the building. Shouts out to my guys. You know what I'm saying? They're on every week, twice a week. Usually catch me down in the comments with them. Uh, we did a little sports off mic, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but because these guys do sports, they're never doing sports when we get here, okay? You're never getting that from them. Your audience is tapping in. What's up? Appreciate you hitting the button. We only accept five stars on the How to Hustle podcast. This is the topic for us, though, today. What is the most important title that you have? I was doing an episode, uh, shout out to GFT, on the Monday nights. We'll be live every Monday, uh, 10 o'clock on the YouTube channel. There's Twitch streams, all of that. Um, and somebody was saying something about the titles. We was talking marriage. And the chick was saying about the girlfriend and the wife. It wasn't really a big difference. That led us to titles and how the weight the titles hold because titles are important. What is the most important title that you have? Since Mark came to work late, we're going to make him go first. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I have a bunch of important titles in my life, you know, son, brother, um, friend. Every, everybody has all them titles. But but which, one, which one is it, Mark? The, the most important one is, 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 is that. Copy is, that. Is, is nothing comes before that. Is nothing more important than that. Is nothing I take more serious than that. Nick, I have to agree. Same here, man. Becoming a father, man, that's the best feeling I've had. Not even close. John, I make make it three for three because I'm. I love being a father. I love being a girl dad. It's the best feeling in the world. Wouldn't change it for nothing. All right. See, my answer is different. Um, most important title that I have is mm. son. The reason why son would be the most important mm-hmm. title is because son prepared me to be able to do all the other jobs. Me being a son to the parents that I'm a son to let me see what marriage looks like, which makes it easier for me to be a husband, which True. then makes it easy for me to be a father because I know what it looks like. I know what it should look like. I know what love looks like. I know what respect, honor. I know what friendship. I know how to do all of those different things from the parents that I came from. And without sure. having them to show me all of those things, I don't know if I could be a good father because how you know what it looked like if you never saw it. So then you can do the job. You can do the job without seeing it. Let's not, you know, misconstrue that. But you know 
how it feels to be that child. And when you then become that parent, you know what it was like to be eight, nine, mm-hmm. 10, 12, whatever the age is. So you was like, let me try to revert back to his thought process and her thought process so that I can handle these different situations. So that's why I would say son was the one for me because there's so many aspects that you get from son that will lead to the rest of it. Cause you're either going to learn what you like and what you don't like, how you want to be treated, or how you don't want to be treated or how to treat people. That's a fact right there. I can definitely agree with that. That's why son was second on my list, especially we're going through after I just went through. Uh, that's definitely most important. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you said, seeing both parents there, knowing what you like, what you dislike. Son is definitely an important title, but it's, to me, it's just, you know, once I became that father, that just took over everything for me. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 don't, I don't want nobody listening to this to hear that you're demeaning any of the titles. Right, right, the right. The title that somebody might have is just friend. It might mm-hmm. be brother, cousin, whatever that might be. Like, let's not demean any of those titles with this topic, but is certain things that you're going to get. The one thing about parent is I can get married again. I can have more kids. Those are just it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. They're, the only ones you go, they're the only ones that you're getting out of this. Nick, go ahead. You look like you got something to say. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm sorry. No. With, me, with me, it's like, um, yeah, something like, it would have been, some would have been second. But I also think about you know I'm a grand I'm the only grandson of all my cousins. All my cousins were girls, so like, and when my mama had me, I was finally it finally someone out of her my late aunt Virginia and my uncle Damon were finally someone had a boy. So I think I take pride in the fact that I was the only grandson out of all my grandparents grandkids because um I'm the second to the youngest. I'm the only boy, and like all my younger cousins. All the great grandkids are majority grandsons, like are majority boys, with the exception of maybe my cousin's oldest daughter and then my daughter. So, but I take pride in the fact that I'm the only grandson out of all my grandparents' grandkids. Nah, see, that's another one there too, though. Which is again, that's why I said I don't want to mean none of the titles because you become the person that you become the person that everybody's looking to. Then you become, you become it. You become the responsible one, or you become. You're the cousin. When everybody uh-huh. call. You're the only one that they got to call. So uh-huh. that's why it's, sometimes that cousin situation is it because certain cousins hold more weight than others. That's that's like, fact right You saying you got some cousins that's more like like my cousin Ro was on episode 100, did the best man speech. Uh-huh. Ro ain't my cousin. That's my that's my right hand. If anybody know anything, it's him. Like, and you got some cousins was like, oh yeah, I forgot all about. Such and such from such and such place, making people names out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go ahead, Mark. You was trying to jump in. Oh, I was about to say, yeah, even that. I was about to ask you a question because you have a you have a title that none of us have. Where's the uh husband title coming at? Um we're gonna talk honestly, we ain't gonna give you the mm-hmm. political answer. <laughs> um <laughs> husband kind of falls in after dad mm-hmm. and they kind of like intertwine together but it's kind of they kind of intertwine together but then it kind of they don't if you in a certain situation see my situation ain't that both my kids is by my wife so uh and i got two girls so me being a husband again that's what you're going to see and the, what the kids are going to see is how do you treat my mom how do you talk to my mom mm-hmm. how do you, so that's affection, love, and all of those different situations. So it's like you kind of can't have one without the other in my situation. So I would say like it's a kind of a tie between second and third, but if we're gonna give it, we're gonna vote for something, let's not ride the fence. I'm gonna say it's third. But that having that other individual is the same thing, like not the same thing as having a kid, because it makes it something where it's like I gotta. I got to change the ways, views, and things that I would have done for this person. And I want to do it because I met this person. So it's not even a thing where you find it hard to do those things because it's like, she makes me want to do this. He makes me want to do this is what I would assume that the woman would say. So 
Most people are going to just tell you, it's my wife, it's my wife. Like, I'm not that guy who's just going to tell you what you want to hear. Um, so I would say wife would be like her, but love you, baby. <laughs> now we I ain't mad at that answer. I ain't mad at that answer at all. Nah, because I mean, like it's a, it's like asking you which kid is the which kid is your favorite. Like you know what I'm saying, you can't really, you can't really answer that question because. Mm-hmm. For real, with the kids, it's really like what age, what age are they, and then I'll tell you which one am I feeling at the moment. Right. Once they hit teenager, they're gonna take you through hell. The little one is always gonna be your favorite at the moment because they're the little one. They've got the mm. less stress that they're providing. You, you know what I'm saying all I gotta do is keep the bottles on ice. You know what I'm saying we're good. I gotta keep cashing you out because you keep fucking up the car and mm-hmm. you know, like, like you didn't mess up the bag. You didn't fumble the bag three four times. I gotta help you move. Like them kids get tricky. Depending on what the yeah. ages and ages is. Yeah. But now let's throw, let, let me throw this one to you, Nick. So she yes, said, sir. Father, father was your answer. Uh-huh. Uh, what do you believe set you up for fatherhood? Like, what made it such a thing for you once you became a dad that it was like, this was it for me? I understand, like, I understand we all, everybody got kids, understands, like, it's a feeling of knowing, like, damn, this is mine and they can't breathe air. They can, only thing they can do is breathe air without me. But mm-hmm. I gotta show them the rest of everything else. So, like outside of that, give me a little bit deeper. Um, the the thing that I've uh, tried to use for my experience so far is like, you know, um, the stuff I can remember like from growing up, because uh, I was raised by my grandparents. So, um, you know, I always look back at you know how their relationship was or whatever because my, my mom and dad they were uh they were they were never married but they uh broke up when i was like like 13 or something so um you know i was up to my grandparents and you know how their relationship was and i used that as a model uh, as far as how i want to go about my relationships or even just how i you know like how my grandfather dealt with me you know, the love and all the attention that he showed with me, I try to do the same thing with my son. And, you know, I remember the lack of attention that I got, you know, from my dad and my mom and certain stuff, you know, situations. And I remember how that how that feeling was. And I put that you in perspective. Put, with you don't want to put him in that situation. God forget. Exactly. You know, because, you know, I know how it is when certain situations, you know, you know, you know this is a hypothetical. Thing. Like, you know, you go up there and ask for help in a certain situation and, you know, you don't get the help either immediately or you don't get it at all. And, you know, you know, you know, that feeling is something that you, you know, you remember for a long time. And, you know, I don't want, I don't want to uh, put that type of uh, stress and everything on him. Cause I know, you know, you might know exactly how that's, how that, uh, how that situation is. So um, that's how I've gone about it uh, so far. You know, he, he just turned a year uh, last month. So, you know, it, it's, it's been, it's been up and down, you know, it's definitely uh mm-hmm a new experience and like you said the only thing he can do for himself right now is breathe well he can walk now but outside of that you know I gotta pretty much do everything if he wanna eat I gotta feed him you know if he get tired I gotta hold him you know Even all that, that stuff you know all that is new you ain't, if you ain't in the house walking around he ain't gonna never learn how to walk <laughs> exactly if you if you crawled on your damn stomach all day he gonna go well this is how we get around <laughs> how we move you know? exactly and you know, I gotta remember, like, for me, I be y'all know I talk crazy. Like I be saying off the wall shit sometimes. And you know, I gotta remember that, you know, as he gets older, I, I can't say that off the wall shit all the time. You know, I can still say off the wall shit, but I gotta put like a filter on it. <laughs> and you know, that's something that I've been working on. My girl for right. sure you know me about yeah, it. Right. Yeah, you got another couple right. months, you got another couple months of that. Cause the first time he say it back, you ain't going the first time he go to daycare and say it. The feeling in your stomach is gonna make you change your whole life. <laughs> He's gonna say some shit in school, and they're gonna say, "Well, we're gonna to have to get you to come pick him up. He's suspended." <laughs> he said, and "You're gonna be like, damn, he got that just for me too." Exactly oh yeah, for sure. Like I'll be looking at stuff he be doing now. I'm like, yeah, he for sure got that for me. Like he for sure be looking at people crazy. Like well, I, I look at people like what, like, what you talking about? He for sure got that look for. I'm like, oh man, he inherited this. <laughs> so it's just, it's just little stuff I got to remember. 
this is another thing that I don't know why people always do though, like with the kids. Like he's one, so we ain't talking about that. But yeah. people always act like kids don't know shit. Like, oh, they only five, they only six, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> if you remember what it smelled like when you walked in your grandmom's house when you was five and your ass is 30, yep. why do you think that the eight-year-old don't remember what happened when it was five? Like <laughs> that's a fact. For real. That's that's real. Sound, though, like, and my, it don't make no sense. My daughter's six, and she asked one day I picked her up from summer school. Can I take a picture on your phone? So, all right, yeah, go ahead. She already knows how to find my phone, how to get on my phone and take a selfie, whatever. The next thing I know, like, I hear some noise on my phone. She and she and found out how she and found Netflix on my phone and went and started watching My Little Pony. Like, I'm like, thank God I had nothing. I, I thought that was on any adult like content or yeah. thing, but like the fact that she knows how to go to find Netflix on my phone, basically, like, man, what the heck? <laughs> this is why you can't have. See, this is to Mark. This is why you don't have nothing in your phone. Once you start passing the phone off to the kids, <laughs> you can't have nothing in your phone. Just like nope, Nicholas, right. talking reckless. Hey. You have reckless in the phone hey. when you passing it off to the kids. Hey, hey, right. when he start when he started talking, I didn't know where that was going, where that story was going, dog. I didn't know. I was, <laughs> yeah, I was just I was just hoping, I was like, why is there like what is she doing? And I'm looking like I'm watching my little pony. She just started laughing. I'm like, how do you find my little pony? And I looked at him like she done went and got she because her mama got yeah. Netflix on her phone, so she know how to she know what the Netflix app looked like. <laughs> I tell oh, my yeah, kids all the time, Daddy don't got YouTube in his phone, girl. I don't got Netflix. What are you talking about? That's on mm-hmm. TV only. <laughs> <laughs> no, my son figured out that when you go, to, if you touch the uh, the screen on YouTube, he, he, he sees a little ball where you can sc- uh, slide everything up and you could like make everything move. Dog, he didn't figure that all the way out already. He didn't figure mm-hmm. out how to um, press end up on the calls. He he knows the red button. He knows the red button leads to something already. You gonna come in? He gonna have a nine nine gorilla going, and you ain't gonna know what's going. On. Uh, that's what I'm about to say. <laughs> that's what I'm about to say. Hey, hey Nick, somebody making beats in a minute. Mm. Hey, look. <laughs> hey, like Mark said, he I already got. I might have been two T already. He might as well start around the pass block already. <laughs> saying, get him, in, get him on a couple of Oklahoma drills. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey, tell, tell, uh, that hit a baseball. I tell tell big fella once he gets situated, you know what I'm saying? Let his AAU coach know we get with Custom Hustle World hype will get our jerseys just right. <laughs> <laughs> <I got you. laughs> All right, now we're going to switch it up a little bit and dive into y'all a little bit. Since I did just tap into that a little bit, 99 Gorilla. Yes, sir. Talk to, us, talk to us a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Let the folks know for the music situations, you know what I'm saying? How you making all of that happen? What's going on over there? Man, look, I've been doing music on and off again since I was in like middle school, my middle school, high school. Uh, I've been around music for a long time. My brother used to uh, do music. I've seen people, like I've been to shows. I've seen people like, I've seen stuff like people be this close away from blowing up. And I've just seen how they mess the situation up. And, you know, I put all those experiences in and I, you know, I just, when it comes to me personally, I'm like, I put all that into effect and I try to like the artists that I work with, I try to tell them stuff like that. But, you know, I can only I can only say so much, you know, I, I, I let people do their own thing, but they eventually figure it out. And I've used that. And even just the knowledge of music, I know, you know, all the genres of music that I try to listen to when I make my beats and everything. You know, I put that into perspective. Some of my favorite producers I've noticed are pretty much. They're multi genre uh, artists, uh, producers, sorry. So I try to put that in perspective, even listen to genres of music I never even heard of before. Like, I just started listening to um, to Japanese 80s music. Excuse me? Dog. It's Japanese 80s music. And if you hear it, it'll sound like, uh, it'll sound like, it'll sound like something you've heard before. But then they start speaking Japanese. You're like, what this the hell? But it, it, it sounds cool. <laughs> Bro. I've heard Japanese jazz, all that before. <laughs> you said Japanese hey, jazz is what you said? Hey, yeah, listen, Japanese jazz. It's listen, yeah, it's, there's, there's a lane for everything. And if niggas ain't feeling it, lane, is. cut hard to the basket. <laughs> now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get sinking. 
forget uh, producing for, for artists. Artists, you're going to go so far. Syncing is where it's at. You're trying to get on these TV, on the TV shows, the movies, video games. That's where I'm trying to get, uh, get make my way towards. And if somebody's trying to get a beat or somebody's trying to do a collab type situation, Nick, where would they be able to, you know what I'm saying, get some of the music from, get some of the beats and all of that information? If you need anything for music production wise, tap in with me. Follow me at 99 Gorilla on Instagram and DM me. I got y'all. Or if y'all uh hit me up on my email, 999 biz, N Y N E. The number nine B I is <laughs> at uh Gmail. It's a B I is B I is. Now we're gonna shift the mark now. He showed up late, but we still gonna let him go. Now, Mark, talk to us about no oh, rule. Man. Oh, oh shit. Uh we on a hiatus right now. You know what I'm saying? We gotta get everybody on the same page, doing the same thing. Um, you know, having three different people with three different personalities sometimes. It can that, that can be rough because everybody had their own mindset, want to do their own thing. So at this present moment, we're trying to, you know, let things figure it out, let things flow, and then um come back to the table and, and see if we can get our minds right to do the right thing. But we're on a little hiatus right now. Now, John, we're gonna go to you, talk a little bit about sports for you. Well, it's for you, number one sports podcast in the world. Every Tuesdays and Fridays on YouTube. YouTube.com backslash sports for you podcast. Um, it's me, it's my brothers, Mark and Nick, every sure. Tuesday and Friday, 6 30 p.m. Pacific time, roughly. Um, we're also, we also stream on Facebook and Twitter at sports for you podcast. We're on IG at sports for you podcast. And what we try to do is bring sports. We try to bring local flavor because obviously we're both, all, we all reside in LA. But we definitely want to bring a local flavor to the national sports scene where it doesn't just be so, you know, the typical national sports, a lot of East Coast bias. But we try to keep it. Wow. Throw us under the bus much? No, I love to say hey, shout out to Hey, dog. Y'all, 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 I got nothing to do with this. With Jay Watch's opinions of the East Coast bias. That's <laughs> 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 These are not the these are not the thoughts of those people of Sports Review Podcast or a townhouse media. <laughs> but no, what we try to do is we try to make sure we keep it lighthearted. We try to keep everything balanced because obviously I know sometimes certain to- topics can get can get start getting heavy towards certain regions of the of the globe. But we try to always make sure we find that balance when we're talking the local sports, but talking about local sports, but definitely more on the national level because right now. We got football coming up. We're right now summer basketball's on hiatus, even though you got summer league. And baseball, as much as we all love baseball, it, we all know baseball is more of a regional sport. We all got our squads. I'm a Dodgers fan. Mark's a Braves fan. Nick's an Angels fan. I know I'd be probably a Phillies fan. But um it it's more of just trying to make uh, bring I'm more of a just I'm more of a just playoffs. I'm more of just a playoffs fan. I can watch in the playoffs. You can't catch me for game twenty eight though. <laughs> I, that's the only time I watch non Dodgers baseball is the playoffs. Hey, hey, I know a lot of people that feel that way though. Hmm. Obviously, but a lot of niggas ain't gonna keep it real, you know. Mm-hmm. They're gonna try to cap. They gonna cap their way through an answer, knowing they ain't watched none of these games. Um, yeah, but I'm like John. If it ain't a Braves game, you know, and now I watch Dodger games now, but if it ain't, I, I'm I, I'm not really watching baseball neither. I catch you in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> no. I got one more for y'all. I didn't even tell y'all about this because I wanted to catch you off guard. I want live reactions and, and answers to these questions. Hey, I got two joints for you. you okay. Which one you want to do? You can do hype on a hot seat where you throw a random question at me and I'll give you an answer. Or you just tell me when somebody asks you, yo, you know the boy hype, what do you think? All right. John, we're going to start I'm, with you. Uh, okay, I'm going to you, boy. You know, you know you, hype what you think. What you think about all this AI stuff, man? Mm. Who Al Marvin? No, well, he, we all know who I, how Philly feels about AI. AI is, AI is a god in Philly. But everything's on, and you obviously work in the entertainment world, and even in your and what you do professionally, it has that kind of as AI kind of got involved with that, especially with the concerts and stuff like that, and. And, and you know which everything you're doing on the podcast and on the radio side. 
Nah, for us, that's more of a labor type thing. Uh, until they make the machine that's going to be able to build a stage, we good when it works out. <laughs> and as far as like all of the, the different hustles and all, nah, we ain't have no issues, no problems with none of that because all my stuff is ran by me. And I like being able to do all of it. I'm control free to the max. Mm. If I can't put my hands on it and be physically doing it, I don't really want to trust the computer to do it. Like I gotta trust the computer to upload it, but I gotta be the one that you know put those fine tunes on it. Mm. That's a good question. Oh, that's good. Mark. I like that. I like that sound. Go ahead, Mark. Um. And I've been trying to think of a, a, a good question. Uh, with the cleaning business, <clears throat> and if it's somewhere far, like how, how would how would um how would you access somebody that's like further away outside of Philly or outside of you know East Coast? Like I always say, if you make it worth my while, I'll slide. If you tell me, yo, I got something that we need to hit done out here in LA, it got to be something that's worth us coming to LA to pay for flight, hotels, and all of that. It gotta be a project that's gonna generate us some money. It gotta make, got it. It gotta make sense, you know what I'm saying? I can't come out oh, here yeah. to cut, you can't come out here to cut one yard, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> and you just spent a couple hundred dollars on a flight, a hotel, and you just made 65 hours, like, you know? Right, yeah, that'll Gotta make it make sense. sense. That's, why, that's why the caveat is always there. If you make it worth my while, I'll survive. Mm. <laughs> So if somebody wanted you to like, let's say for example, like their yard, like their house, all that, you wouldn't you wouldn't fly out here and do that. What's the number? What's the house looking like? You gotta scout yeah. all of that. All right. uh, it's a, it's a, uh, all of that. I'm I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw out like I'm using example like on uh, the size of my house. Let's say it's like uh three, four bedroom, two baths. Uh it's a, it's a nice size backyard. And let's say for example, the weeds in the backyard about uh half my height. <laughs> All right, so Nick is giving y'all, you know what I'm saying, a good layout of his situation, and y'all know things are good over there. Um, <laughs> what, you, what you need done? You need new floor. You need new floors. You need a reconstruction. Do you need a new roof? You just want the house clean. Like, what's the situation? That's why I said. Oh, let's say, let's say, for example, you want the, like the whole house clean and need like new floor. Let's say something like that. I'm trying to think of something that would be worth your while. Drop like make your way out here. I'm trying to see where that would right. be at. So you need a you need a deep you need a deep clean and you need new floors and you need the joints cut. I mean, we would have to look at the photo. It's all about, this is how the cleaning jobs always work. The cleaning jobs are all about, what does it look like? I mm -hmm. hate when people call me and ask me like, oh, yo, I need a three bedroom house, two bathrooms. How much you can charge me? What does it look like? How bad mm -hmm. is it? We had a house my cousin sent me where it's a bunch of dog shit in the house. Somebody moved out and they just need mm -hmm. to get it cleaned out and run it out again. It's like, okay, that's what brooms, gloves, and dustpans are for. We're going to charge you a little extra. But we can get it, but I can't give you a price without physically me looking at it and going, I'm gonna need three people to pay. I'm gonna have to pay three people to come do this job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna have to spend X amount to get rid of this trash. Like all of that goes into those cleaning jobs. And okay. you can't figure that out through somebody's word. Because a nigga will send you some pictures of just the left side and missed all the shit that's over here on the right side. <laughs> Just because they want you to quote them that number, and then when you get there, say, well, "Oh, you told me it was this." Lad, that's not how this is gonna work out. <laughs> so, for for an out of town joint like that, we gonna have to zoom the situation. You gonna have to walk through yeah. all the square footage of the crib to show me this joint, and then we gonna have to come up with a number. And if the number makes the if the number makes sense, then we slide. If okay. the number don't make sense, then we can't slide because it it always then, has to make sense. You know and then we can have then we can have hype on the show in in, in, in real life. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, man, exactly. Listen, international hype is not just a hashtag; it's a way of life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. That, that's why the listeners that was probably from out of state that was inquiring. <laughs> I mean, copy that. You know, we like to tackle it all over here. Four time hustler, I got everything but coke. <laughs> um, there you yeah. go. Sports for you. I appreciate y'all coming on. We've been trying to make this second appearance happen for a minute. That was episode one thirteen. Shouts out to my guys on the West Coast. We are. Oh, I am hype. That's H-Y-M-P-E. It's hype. It's not hype. I'm not geeked up.